This is Entertainment Weekly's coverage of Comic-Con 2017. I am Kyle Anderson, joined now by uh, several of what I assume are the many uh, voice cast members of the forthcoming video game, Call of Duty World War II. Guys, welcome. Thanks for having Thank you. Thank Hello. you for having us. Oh, please. It's my pleasure entirely. 100%. Right. I don't want anyone to do the math on that, because I haven't done it either. It's, well, okay. <laughs> Uh, so Call of Duty World War II, uh, Dave, I, I want to start with you. What was what was the pitch to you when they said, we want you to come uh, say some things for a video game? How, how would how'd they actually approach you to say, here's this character you can play? Well, you just, I mean, they approach you, you just get a phone call, and, and mm -hmm. you know it's, it, this is happening. And I went to my 15-year-old son, Ty, because I knew he would understand this world a great deal more vividly than I did. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I said to him, so this it's... It's Call of Duty, but it's like a zombie bit. And he went, oh yeah, that, no, the, the zombie thing is a big, that's become a big part of the Call of Duty franchise. Yeah, it seems like it seems like the phrase Nazi zombies is a, is a very fair selling point. off the tongue. Right? It? Nazi zombies, yeah. Feels natural. Uh, so, uh, you know, Ty told me in no uncertain terms that this was something I had to be involved in, so uh, I do what my 15-year-old tells me. Yeah. Ooh, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> did, did everybody else have a 15-year-old advising them? Not quite yet, no. No, I got cousins that, are, and my youngest brother, he's a huge Call of Duty fan, so he gave me the quick lowdown quickly in it, and what I really liked about this game is the fact that it's based <clears> on reality, <throat> that it is World War II, and the amount of research and the graphics and the amount of history information that's going into the details of the even the very little um, aspects of the game I think fans are going to be blown away anybody who's a history buff anybody who uh, wants to know the politics behind what happened in World War II it, it went as far as even research on um, what kind of guns they used is pretty incredible and we play actors or characters in, in that each one of us has, has our own different storylines. And something I mentioned in the panel is we get a chance to actually have a strong voice and change our um, the creative aspect of, of our character in the process of it. So we have a lot of input. Oh, so you felt that you really got to develop a character and that wasn't just lines on the page? Yeah, I don't feel that way. I just, I for me personally just started in the process of, I've done just really one full session. So I, I feel crazy about you, they take your likeness and stuff like that. But I've been working with a game developer and really trying to come up with a different spin on it to not only make my character, I play Marie Fisher, who's an engineer who's um, born in Germany but moved to uh, Cambridge before, but then also lived in, in the States. So she's very much ahead of her time in World War II, so she's a very strong character, very intelligent, and a badass, too. Yeah. Is she based on an actual human? Well, that's a very good question. I think there's a lot in it, um, in terms of what happens around her and her storyline that is based on reality. Uh, ha is she based on a real character? You're gonna have to ask the game developers okay. that. I'm not gonna do that. That's, that's a good. That's a good thing to know. Uh, Udo, what about you? Who who do you play in, in this uh, in this call? Uh, I play Dr. Straub, and I'm German, so the word Nazi is very much attached to a German. But I wasn't born that time, and I play uh, it because it's zombies. That's why I accepted it. And you love zombies. No, because the story is with zombies, it would have been with real people. I would not have accepted the role of being a Nazi doctor. <laughs> and I create, uh, I, my part is that I create a new kind of soldier who doesn't sleep, who doesn't eat, who never dies. And then also I say, you know, I have done more than that. I created the devil. So being, being German is a very kind of... I get offers, I only played, for example, I played three times Adolf Hitler in comedy. There's a difference between when you play Adolf Hitler living on the moon trying to attack America, <coughs> so that's different, but I have never and I will never play a serious Nazi. By the way, Never. I love your accent. I just the love accent that is from Germany. <laughs> and I, would, I get offers. I mean, I was a Nazi in the Rob Zombie film Tarantino. I was Iron Skies yeah. coming out now. So many films, but they were all comedy. Right. So to be a Nazi or play a Nazi over the top, that is also kind of, but to play, I would never play uh, Adolf Hitler or any Nazi in a serious way because I couldn't. 
But what's really interesting is the international cast and the different aspects. I'm originally Canadian. I've, I I've an American accent. You're from Paris. Yeah, and I so have a French accent. And a French accent. French <laughs> Scotland, accent. Scotland, is that right? I have a German I'm from Scotland, yes. Scotland. Yes. yes. So it's it, the, the, I think the aspects of the game and the gamers and the developers are really trying to make this an international project. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that's really says a lot in terms of the fan base being worldwide, too. Yeah. So I'm excited. And, and the I'm sorry, the trailer yeah. is amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. Have you seen it? I have what seen it. Well, I'm I'm I get very overwhelmed by those types of games. So all I think is like, well, I'm dying in ten yeah, seconds. Yeah. Like, there's no way I'm surviving either a real war or a fake digital war that is presented before me. Have you mm -hmm. played before? But it looks intense. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm always very overwhelmed. <laughs> but I'm gonna play because I want to hear you guys and these characters develop. Because it sounds like like uh, what is what is the script? When you get a script for a video game, is it different than we don't yes. get a film or a television mm -hmm. show? Did yeah, you get a script? No, we didn't. I didn't get a script. I did not what, get what, the what whole thing, it's but lines. Basically, they they put us in a in a in a box in a room, and then they're like, okay, here are your lines, and then they you know they feed us with the the, the story of our, of our of our character. So I, I play Olivia Durand, and mm -hmm. she is from the resistance. She enrolled in in the, res the French resistance. Uh, she is uh, passionate about art, so this is some, you know, they, they feed you with those elements and so you can implement them in the way you portray, uh, you know, your, your character, but it's, it's basically, as you're doing it, yeah. you're creating it. It's it's, a, I find it a very hard process and a tricky process in terms of the, to make a game, you know, as actors we get a script and we can control our image. Here, mm -hmm. the image is already somewhat created for you that we don't have the visual of it and we're having the <clears throat> voice to match it. If we're lucky in the early stages of the development of it and they're still building it, we can have influence in, in terms of changing it. But there's a lot of it that is kind of going with the trust of the people that are behind the booth in the in the voiceover sessions that tell you, okay, now you're getting attacked by five zombies, <laughs> or now you know, now you find this secret box that like, will open up this. And there's things that there has to be a lo level of trust, and yeah. it's a it's a very interesting process, definitely first for me. And the director knows more, of course. He knows, he wrote it, the writer. And it's like what she says, it's like you have your text, you have a special camera on your head, a little camera, to have all the movement of your face when you say, but they guide you through. But they know more than we do. Right. Because we don't know, even today, I don't know where I'm going to go. <laughs> I think I one of the most challenging, I don't know for you guys, if it was the same, if you had all the running or beating things up and you're in this tiny booth and oh, you have yeah. nothing, you're like running on spots. And I'm like doing jumping jacks so my breath would match. <laughs> I'm like literally trying to do push ups, <laughs> like trying to get at least the reality of what your voice should sound like if you're under distress yeah. and just to make it match yeah. what they eventually yeah. would be. And that is a very tricky process. I actually asked them the other day to bring in like martial art pads so I can like really start hitting them because it, so that would be, be very the, immersive in this time, yeah. Well, there's three stages, you know, if we're getting attacked by zombies, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So. And, and like it almost sounds like, and David, maybe you could speak to this. It almost sounds like there's a bit of a, like almost a live theater aspect to it, where you're sort of having to kind of tuck and roll with new surprises. Well, the thing that's interesting about it is that it, it's not like you don't follow a linear narrative because obviously this game depends on how people interact with it, and whether, right. whether they come yeah. into a room when they've done another bit of the game, so whether there's zombies there or there's no zombies there. So you have to record lines multiple times depending on where the emotional state of the story will be by the time you get there. So, so again, it's all quite disjointed as a, as a, as a process. And yeah. you're, you're obviously, our job is to make something as real as possible. But you, it, it is, it, it's an unusual one in that you're, you're having to kind of uh, pluck this kind of emotional reality out of thin air, really, because it doesn't, it doesn't follow a, we're used to following a script that, yeah. that progresses from yeah. one scene to another. And these scenes are all, can all be jumbled up and can all be, it, but it's, you know, it's it's the future. This is this is a huge uh, uh, a huge industry, and people like my son. It's the most exciting thing in the world. It's so the it's most fantastic. important. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it's fantastic to be still dipping a toe in that pool. Yeah, and they also have a camera also to try to get your face. Uh, they t they videotape your face doing the lines. I know for the process that I did, they actually had originally they had a helmet cam with yeah. a camera there, so they get your emotions within the eyes, and they have to recreate that. So the technology is blown away. It's the same technology as, as Avatar, I believe, that they used. Oh, yeah. and, 
And it's just amazing that they can capture your likeness and the emotion of it. So there, what's great about Call of Duty is what I'm noticing, they're, they're hiring real actors. They're not hiring you know, just voiceover actors or people that are just in the gaming world. They're really trying to make this as authentic as possible. And I think that is, I think the fans are gonna completely appreciate that and it be blown really away. It looks like us. Do it does. Yeah. Did yeah. you see your yeah. avatar? I looked at it. Some very attractive <laughs> soldiers. <laughs> 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 okay, she looks like you, but a little bit sick. She's a little under the weather. She's in the middle of the She's a little, 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 little bit of a We'll find out. We'll find out how sick you look when the. I asked for blush too. Thank you guys for the third. Thank you for the fantastic Call of Duty World War II. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. It was fun. And please stay here for more great coverage from Entertainment Weekly at San Diego Comic Con.